Hello everyone, welcome back for another video. In today's video, we're gonna talk about in the air imaging. We're gonna go for one specific sequence, diffusion. I really want to have a good diffusion with minimized uh, distortion. We're gonna do it on a higher field strength as 3T, which is more challenging compared to 1.5 or lower field. So we love challenges, don't we? So I'm gonna test out different diffusion sequences. Uh, which is available on the Siemens tree and see which one that gives less distortion. We know that number one enemy of diffusion is distortion. It's a very difficult area due to soft air tissue interference. Nonetheless, stick around and I will show you some of the results. For those who are new, my name is back again. I'm an MRI radiographer. So in my channel, I'm covering things from basic to advanced I'm right, topics, tutorials, just like this one. If you haven't subscribed yet, considering doing so. Like I said in the beginning of the video, we love challenges. So that's why I want to do it in 3T. Check out which one sequences and minimize the distortion or eliminate that. I don't think we were able to eliminate it totally, but minimize it. Yeah, I do think so. Without further ado, let's go to the scanner and we're going to test out. All right, we are at 3T. I mean, gonna do some tests here now. So what I'm gonna do here now is I'm going to Siemens Street, go to the head. We're gonna go for the diffusion. Here's a list of different diffusion for different purposes. So we can see everything from single shot to resolve to uh, blade DVI and zoom it, as I can see here. So I just want to mention that the blade diffusion is uh, optional, so you have to pay to get it uh, available. Nonetheless, we're gonna test it out as well to see if it works. And then in the end, you also have a haze diffusion. Haze diffusion is now back on 3T. It uh, was gone on the, on the earlier 3T, it was only available on 1.5, but now with the newer 3T, newer software, it's now available again. So let's test that as well. All right, so I just did some uh, localizers, just fast imaging for a T2 and uh, in the coronal and the transversal, so I can do a fine position on that one for in the ear. So let's pull out the first one. It's a single shot EPI, it's the most common. EPI sequences. So we're not going to cover the whole head, so I'm just going to take a few slices here. I'm going to try to have the same uh, slice thickness and the same slices on every test we do here. So the scan time will vary a lot, but for this test it doesn't matter. I just want to see the distortion. So we're going to image around that kind of area right there. Just gonna low on the TR, just get the scan time a little bit down. Low on the TE, just to get a little bit more signal. All right, so I guess I'm happy with that one. So let's scan that one now. Let's get another sequence. So we're going now for the result. Result, I'm just gonna do the same. This time I'm gonna copy parameters. I'm not gonna copy the center slice group. I'm gonna copy the slices. So check this out. So now I'm copying the slices all the slices will be the same. It went from 27 to 15. So it's 15 slices. I like and wanted to have it on a single shot EPI it will now be the same for this one. It changes slices, distortion, um, sorry. It changes slices, distance factor and slice thickness, but the field of view, read or face, it doesn't affect at all. So if you want to use it in the daily routine, you have to take, be careful with that one, but they're very fast for just copying the slices and the coverage it, itself. So that's resolved. Let's test that one. And another one here. So we're gonna test uh zoom it for in Siemens list. It's only coronal plate. So we're gonna at least what I saw. So I'm gonna make this for transversal, just copying everything like that. And another thing, I am just gonna lower the TR just to get a little bit lower scan time. Do a little reposition on that one. So it looks very strange. It looks like I'm gonna get fold over on this sequence, but no, you're not gonna get fold over on this sequence. That's why it's called zoom it. It only excitate uh, that area, so no fold over we occurred here. With that, you're also able to minimize the the TE. The TE can be lower one because you only acquire this area, not the whole head, like we did on a single shot the first sequence. And by that, you're also able to have a lower TE. We went from 96 to now 73 on this sequence. So the lower the TE, the more signal, of course. Let's go. So we're gonna pull over the blade diffusion. So I'm going to copy the slices right here, just we have the same slices. Lower the TR, of course, just to minimize the scan time a little bit. 
And you can see, we know that with the blade, the blade in general, you need to have a little bit face over sapling to avoid the, the, the blade uh, artifacts or the streaking ones. So it's the same here for the diffusion. So yeah, as you can see, it's original from uh, zero to 50%. So it's set from Siemens to 50%. So let's try that with that modification on that part. The last one is uh, haze diffusion. It's also called non-EPI diffusion. And like I said earlier, it was not available on 3T, but now it is, and always been available on 1.5. So here you can see the, the TR is all, already at the minimal, as you can see the TR of 2000. The scan time is six minutes now, so I really want to lower the scan time a little bit. And we know that uh, we went from three millimeter to four, so we get more signal. So let's lower the averages just to get a little bit scan time down. The thing about lowering the averages on this diffusion is that you cannot see the indicator. It won't affect the indicator, but you will get a pinpoint on what kind of signal you have and what kind of uh, averages after reducing the averages, what kind of signal you will have after doing that. So I'm just going to reduce it to five and I, I think it will be enough signal there. So it went from six minutes to 2.2 minutes and 35 seconds. Also, so we didn't scan all this and I want to show you some of the results. All right, the results is right here. The first one is single shot like we tried for the whole head, the resolve, the zoom it, the blade DVI, haste DVI, and this is the reference images. So I really want to have this in the area, area right here, highlight it, I mean, no distortion or minimal distortion. So let's look at the first one. This looks really bad, a lot of distortion for the temporal lobe here because of the air soft interference. Uh, also here you can see there's some anatomy here, but it's distorted. And here, also distorted on a single shot DPI zoom it. So, yeah. Nonetheless, Blade DPI looks promising. You can see the structure here. It's more or less not effective on both sides. A little bit low on SNR in the middle, but you can do something about that. Like I said, this test was not for SNR or scan time. I just want to see the distortion. So if we add a little bit more signal to that part, I think it would be good. Haze DPI it's very good for cholesterol cases. We know in the air. And uh, for the distortion part, it looks promising. But if you ask me, I really want to, if you, if you had to choose one of these, I think I would choose Blade EVI. The reason for that is that with the scan of Blade EVI, if you scan five minutes, you get two B values, B0 and B1000, whatever you want to choose, and an ADC. If you go for the haste EVI, you know that it's only one single scan. You have to do two single scans and then calculate it to an EVI, uh, calculate it to an ADC. That means that you will have a longer scan time in the longer run, right? So the Blade DVI is a new one for me as well. I need to optimize a little bit more. But for this purpose, distortion purposes, looks very promising. After the testing, I was curious on the coronal plane. I didn't record the coronal plane, how they set it up, but I did the same, but only on the coronal. So let's check your results. So on the coronal plane, you can see here, I did it the same. Uh, Reordering, single shot, resolve, and so on and so on. So it's a little bit too less of signal here, but you can see the pileups here, the, the, the distortion is maximized here. It's a little bit less distortion here on the uh, resolve, zoom it, also single shot EPI based technique, distortion. Blade DVI looks promising again, you know, you see the structure right here. Also, haste DVI looks promising, but again, if I could choose one, I would rather go for the blade DVI. But uh, it's also new for me, need to test more. But for these purposes, Blade EVI looks very promising. Well, that's it, guys. I hope you find this video valuable. Nonetheless, this test was just to see what kind of uh, diffusion we have available for the in-air purposes and see which one minimizes the distortion. We know that on 3T is very challenging, but uh, who doesn't love challenges, right? Before we close up, I do have a question for you. Which diffusion technique do you use for the in-air imaging? Please let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, do not forget to push the like button, hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell, so we get a ding ding whenever new things from me are coming up. And I will catch up with you in the next video, so take care until then. Peace out.